All right, everybody, here we are today with Margot, and we're at her house in Jupiter. And uh, Margot is going to show us around her garden and her trees. Now, how much uh, property do you have here? It's almost five acres. Wow. And yeah. uh, how long have you been here? I've been here 20 years. We moved up from Fort Lauderdale 20 years ago. And I guess I wanted to bring some of Fort Lauderdale up here. And I'm originally from Jamaica, so I wanted to bring a little Jamaica up here also. So I've been growing the Jamaican variety of mangoes and my Aki trees, which I'm going to show you. And so far they've been successful. So yay me. <laughs> now, when you got here 20 years ago, did you plant right away or did you wait some time before you started planting? I started planting. In fact, I brought up a Bombay mango tree, which we're going to, I'm going to show you. It had been growing in Fort Lauderdale, but it had been only growing, I guess, for about three years. So I had to root prune it and then bring it up. And I didn't know if it was going to work, but I said, you know what? Rather than leave it there for somebody there to cut it down and discard it, I said, let me bring it up here. And I've gotten some really good mangoes from it, so I'm happy. Oh, wonderful. And the trees that you planted here, uh, are that most of them grafted or from seed? Or both? Most, actually, the ackee you can grow from seed, and you can, get a pro, uh, you can get fruit from that in about three, four years. Ackee is really good, and, and just from seed. You don't have to graft ackee. But most other things are grafted here? I would say so, yes. Most of the other things and are grafted. And did you uh, purchase... Oh, the, the jackfruit from seed. Okay. Did you purchase the trees from a local nursery? Some I did, yes. Okay. And right. some I actually purchased from Fort Lauderdale. Is that considered local? Yes. Probably not. Yes. <laughs> okay. Different times, different zone. Okay. And in Jamaica, did you grow fruit trees? I came here at 14 as a child, so... You know, I'm sure my parents did on, on you know. Well, where you grew up with the fruit yeah, trees? Yeah, I grew, you grew up, up with fruit trees always, okay. yes. Okay, so. So I have I, a love for it, a natural love for fruit, fruit trees. All right, well, uh, we're excited. So show us around your house here. Well, I'm going to start with this. This is so unusual, and everybody has it, and they don't even know it's any good. This is called beauty berry, and it doesn't have much fruit right now because we're in the winter, but there you can see some green berries growing, and they turn purple. And, and a lot of people said to me, oh, I think that's poison. And I'm like, let me look it up. And I did. And it, there's beauty berry jam. I'll have you taste some before you leave. But it's delicious. It, it has no taste if you pick it off the bush. But if you jam it, it's amazing. Wonderful. <laughs> I know. All right. Yes. Then, of course, we have our typical coconut trees, which do grow really good in Jupiter, believe it or not. I must have a dozen coconut trees on the property. Here we have a mango tree. This is a slow growing mango. It's a carry and it's delicious, but you can only pick it and eat it right away because it does bruise really quickly. So you have to be careful with the carry. And how old is this mango tree? I would say this one is about five years. So, and I got this from a nursery. Okay. We have two ponds on the property. So we have a lot of good supply of water. Plus we have a lake in the back. Are these man-made ponds? I do believe so. We didn't dig them. We bought the house. The, this house was built in 1974. So So the ponds were here when you moved in? Yes, they okay. certainly were. And sometimes they go all the way dry and you think, oh my gosh, I've lost the pond. And you know what? The first few rains, it comes back and you see all this wildlife. I call it my wildlife sanctuary. Do you get any uh, water off the ponds for your trees at all? Not or anything? from the ponds. I think, though, the trees, their roots go deep. Don't, okay. and they probably do get water from it. But in the back, we have a, a long lake that we share with other neighbors, and we do get our water for irrigation from them. Okay, so are you irrigating the trees up front? Nope. Do you irrigate the trees out back? Nope. Okay. They're uh, on their own. I'm a terrible gardener. But, you know, I say to the trees, listen, you're on your own. It's sink or swim. And I think they listen to me because they do survive. Okay. <laughs> and do you do you fertilize your trees? I do fertilize. And when I fertilize, I water them, yes. How often do you fertilize them? Well, the mango, the lychee, the citrus, I would say three times a year. And it's all with organic fertilizer. Okay. Do you yeah. spray the trees at all? No. Okay. Do not spray them. Because I do believe if they're going to have any mites or insects, the wasps are going to take care of that. Oh, great. And here we have a lychee tree. I think this one... Could be a Brewster. The person who gave it to me didn't tell me the variety. I do have a Brewster and I have some Empress and 
some princess lychees. Now, how long has this tree been here? I would say this tree's been here about five years. Does it fruit every year? It started to fruit like a couple years ago. Yes. Okay, great. And no problems with the mite. And they don't, um, they don't fruit every year. It's every other year for lychee. Yes. And any problems with the lychee mite that people are having these days? I don't have it on this tree, but I had it on a tree because I have four acres here. So on the north side, I had it on one of the trees and I trimmed it all the way back to no leaves, discarded all of it. But I'm telling you, the because that, that was overwhelmed with the mites, but the wasps will take care of the mites. Okay. So don't right. get rid of your trees, guys. And don't spray it with crazy stuff. Okay. And here we have a, an Aki tree. This one I grew from a seed from my own tree. All my Aki trees are from seeds. And this gives me amazing harvest. Now I understand there's uh, two varieties of Aki. There's soft and is hard pretty much. Yeah, the, the soft one is called it like a butter Aki. This one is the firm one. And everybody loves it because it doesn't break apart when you cook it. Because the butter, the other one, the butter one, you cook it and it just dissolves. Now, when you plant it from a seed, if you get a seed from the tree that's not the butter one, can it turn out to be the butter one? Or no, is it so it's, it's true it's to seed? It's true to seed. Okay. And I have quite a few little seedlings. I don't know if you'd like any. You can just have them because I get so many. I get hundreds. Wow. So, uh, and you eat the, how often does this tree fruit? We can get two, two harvests a year. And do you cut back the tree at all? I have, but this is a young tree. Believe it or not, this is the younger tree. Wait till I show you the mature tree. Okay. And uh, now there's a saying that if you eat it when it's unripe, you can die. Do you know anyone that's died from eating it that way? No, I don't. No, Jamaicans know better. We know how to pick it, how to harvest it, and how to clean it and cook it. And, it's... and when is critical, too. Yeah. So you, you don't want to eat it when it's closed. It's a pod. I'll show you. We have a pod on one of the trees. You don't want to clo eat it when the pod's closed. You want to make sure it opens up and inside you'll see the yellow fruit with the black seeds. If you don't see that, forget about it. Okay. All right. But once you see that, you're good. It has its own sickness too, Jamaican vomiting disease. Jamaican vomiting disease. From eating that fruit unripened. Well, I do it. It's like you can die if you don't you get sick. You can die if, okay. if you eat it in large quantities. That's why you can't sell it in the United States. You can sell it tin. You can sell it canned, but you can't sell it fresh. So we have friends that like it. We let them come and pick it when we know it's ripened, but we do not sell it ever. We give it to friends and family. Okay. And we usually make them pick their own, then they know that it wasn't forced open. But we also watch, we supervise to make sure they're not picking dangerous. Gaia. Arrows is what it's called. Gaia, all right. <laughs> Here we have more lychee, and these are only about five, six years old, but they're a good size. And then we have a jackfruit. Okay, a bunch of lychees, about five or six years old. Mm -hmm. And, and I have jackfruit. two jackfruits. Here's one. I've gotten fruit off of that one, and that I grew from a seed. Wow. Uh huh. That's about four years old. And there's another jackfruit. Have you gotten any from that one yet? No, not yet. That one's uh, younger. Okay. But my friend would give me three jackfruit, and I thought, you know, I want my own tree one day. <laughs> and how exactly. long after you planted it did it get a fruit? I would say I just got a fruit last year. It was the first time. And it's been in the ground how and long? It was, I would say about four years. And okay. the fruit was massive. I mean, I don't see any now, but I'm sure when the weather gets warmer, we'll get more fruit. Here I have a long down. Long and tree, okay. But I don't know the variety. And here we have more mangoes. Which mango is this? That, I'm not sure of the variety, but I did get it from a nursery. I should have kept notice of that. Does it get fruit on it? Yes. But it's, I, I, honestly, the fruit I don't like. And see, they're already... um. Blooming, yeah. Yeah, it's blooming. They're, we're getting blossoms. But that's not good, because if you get blossoms when it's freezing, they will drop off and die. So this tree has been known to blossom like three times. <laughs> it keeps trying. Bless its heart. It keeps trying. 
I'm experimenting and trying to go with some bananas, but not too successful yet. I have to learn this. Here we have a Bombay mango tree. Oh, wow. That's a big one. Yes. And this Bombay mango is, if you ask me, and if you ask most Jamaicans, it's the king of mango. Because it's, it's got the sweetest taste ever. I had a friend and she was telling me about her Hayden tree. She says, I have the most beautiful mango tree. And I said, oh, what, what's the variety? And she said, Hayden. And I said, really? Have you ever tried Bombay? She says, never. So I took a Bombay mango for her and she said, I hate you. She says, I care if I can eat mango again <laughs> because she loved <laughs> the Bombay so much. She said, it was, it was life changing. Now, uh, how old is this tree? This one is over 20 years because I brought it up from Fort Lauderdale. So I would say this might be like 24 years old. Do you ever cut it back? I did a little, yes. And in cutting it back a little, it really got bigger. It, it was good for it. I was afraid to at first. You know, you're always scared to trim uh -huh. your trees. But then I did, and it was the best thing I did. And, and does this tree fruit every year? No. It blossoms every year. But if you get a cold snap, It'll kill the blossoms. And it doesn't always, it's blossomed twice. And the second blossom, we got another cold snap. And it gave up, I think. So how often does it, every other year, every five years, how often? No, it just depends on the, when, when the cold weather. So it's been in 20 years. How often has it been? I think I've had four harvests. In 20 years? Yes, terrible. Okay, so but, that's... But, it, but it's covered with mangoes when it, but you do get it. Yeah, so you see everybody, uh, that's a great point. So this is a... Bombay mango, an excellent tasting mango, but in 20 years, four years, she's gotten an amazing harvest. But and that's just because I live in Jupiter. If I lived in Fort Lauderdale, I'd get it every year. So I say Fort Lauderdale is a different zone. Jupiter is colder and Jupiter farms right here. We're actually three degrees colder than in town because things will grow east of 95 because of the warm Gulf Stream breeze that comes up. But if, you, um, if you're in Fort Lauderdale, it's there all the time. Now, there's some mangoes that just don't do well out here. And this one. This is one. Bombay is one that doesn't do as well. It does not do as well. But even in Fort Palm. Lauderdale, even really? in Fort Lauderdale and West Palm, this is one that doesn't, uh, it's not as productive. But if you're east of 95, for some reason, even in town, breadfruit grows east of 95 in Jupiter. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I've I've seen a breadfruit tree as big as my mango tree. Wow, wow! And that's because it's east of ninety five. And I yeah, said to east the people, of ninety five is a great zone for growing. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's that warm. Uh, How far sea west of you of ninety five are you? I'm only about five minutes. Okay, but that's enough. And not only that, we're surrounded by pine trees. Pine trees keep it cool in here. You feel that nice breeze. And the air is pure. It's because of the so I'm not trading it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'll 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 be satisfied. I'll settle for good harvest once every five years because I love okay. it over here. So I have some more mango trees, and I don't know what the varieties are, but they're fabulous, fabulous eating mangoes. They're too, those were actually here when I moved here, and they were already that size. Oh wow! Yeah. And do you cut those back at all? I did, and the, and you know the hurricanes help too. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. They do their natural. So those training. trees are, are they loaded every year? Loaded every year. Yes. Every those year. are reliable. You see, it is a variety. Uh, uh, not uh, this uh, Bombay. It's an East Indian. Yes, it's known not to do as well here as other varieties. That every year, no matter where they are. Well, the Julie, the Bombay, and the East Indian come from East India. Yeah. And the southern part of India. So therefore, they're, they're from a warmer climate, whereas some of these other mangoes are from the northern climate. But guess what? My Bombay would have given me blossoms by now, and it hasn't. So I think it's learning. It's learning. I think trees <laughs> do learn. Because you don't see any blossoms. No. It blossoms every year, religiously. So it's capable of giving me fruit every year but this year no blossoms and i'm thinking wow you learned your lesson <laughs> <laughs> so those two trees were here and they do great every year yes and what about these here this one um 
that's just I, I I I don't even remember the variety, but you know, it, it, I didn't like the taste of it. It's a long, skinny mango, and okay. I I think it's a nambak. I, nambak, I my like most it. likely, yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> it just has a real nothing taste. Yeah. You know, it's ugh. This different a, taste buds thing. for different folks. Different what about this one? That's Aki's that I bought from a nursery and they've never taken off. They've been there like three, four years and look at them, nothing. I'm about to dig them up and but, throw them away. But you don't water them, right? You don't have to. You really well, don't have to water, water an Aki tree. I've never watered those two. Yeah. <laughs> look at this mango tree, no water. Put them in the ground. I gave him water the first time. How long's it been there? Uh, just last year. Okay. Do you I know think, what kind that is? No, I think that was growing on the property from a seed of something that fell. <laughs> okay. Now you have all this land here. What's your plan for all this land? When I moved here, my son was a soccer player. He's still a soccer player. And he begged me not to fill it up because he wanted to come and play soccer with his friends. And then I thought if I ever sold the property, people wouldn't want fruit trees. They would rather have somewhere to ride their horses. So I kept it for that value, but now I regret that. I wish I'd filled it with fruit trees. Uh -huh. <laughs> Still can. It's never too late. I, I agree, because I know we plant not for ourselves, but for the, for the future. That yeah, is. yeah. That was a beautiful property. Thank you. And I have a uh, star fruit over here. And oh. he's, he's doing okay. I've seen star fruits, though. Three times the size. So this one is perplexing to me. We can go under the tree. Okay. Because I do fertilize it. So this is a star fruit tree. Yeah. All right. Do you get a crop on here? I get like two, at least two crops a year. Okay. Do you know what kind it is? No, I don't. And but they are delicious. All right. So you got to take if you see anything ripening that you want. And you put this one here. No, this was here when I got here. This That's why I think here. it should have been bigger. And so you don't need to water this because look how close we are to the water. Yeah. All righty. So where else? Some bananas over there. Yeah. And a avocado tree that I grew from seed, wow. which gives me amazing avocado. How often? Once a year. Okay. And I'm lucky though, if I get any, because between the raccoons and the squirrels, but you know, I figure we have to feed nature also. So I'm not too upset with the, um, with the animals. What kind of avocados? Are they bigger I, or it's smaller? It's just, it, if I, grew, I just grew it from a seed. So it's, it's, I guess it's a wild avocado. <laughs> But delicious. Do you know what part of the year they you get something? Around the same time as the mangoes. So around July, August, you'll get your harvest. Okay. So this is another oh. lychee tree. And you see the blossoms coming up on this one. They're going to get harvest. Another lychee tree. Mm -hmm. Wow. This, you can already see the fruit coming up, right? Look at this. This is... This is going to be probably my best tree this year. Look at this. Wow. You can get closer and see that. It's time. Yeah. This, yeah. this is going to be full of fruit. Tell us about this tree here that's going up with this. Oh, yes. I must tell you. That's, a, that's just a regular Florida palm tree. But that thing that's growing up, symbiotic relationship, is a Monstera deliciosa. Wow, look at it coming right up the tree. And people love it because they'll cut a leaf off and stick it in a vase in their home. It's now the thing to have a monstera leaf. Yes. <laughs> if you can get a fresh one. Wow. But look at it. It's just start I just started with just one little cut from somebody's plant. Very cool. <laughs> All right. There's my prize Aki. Look at that, how big that tree is. And when that thing goes to have Aki, it's like you're looking at a Christmas tree. Do you ever cut it? Decorations. Do you ever cut it back or no? I have. And there's, it just does better. There's the You Aki. can't kill an Aki tree. <laughs> there it is. You can't kill it. And now that's when it's closed. The pot is closed. Remember, yeah. you have to yep. wait for it to open up. 
Look underneath. Look at all those little trees. Anybody wants a little tree? There they are. Wow, that's a big tree. This is my pride and joy. Which way now? I'm going to show you my coffee. Very rustic here. Nothing fancy. There's coffee growing. Wow. <laughs> I like the way these Take tasty berries. Yeah, it. I like them. I like the berries. Yeah. You twist it. Oh, you twist it. Okay. You have to twist it. As like you do with citrus. You know, you hold it and twist it. Yeah. And so coffee berries. And I have two trees. I have that one is actually the bean came from the Blue Mountains. <coughs> and Jamaica, same Arabica bean. This one I got at a nursery in Florida. Actually, the, at the fair. I got this from the fair in Florida. And what do you do with it? Well, I've been processing it. And, but on a small scale, just to test to make sure I could make my own coffee, and I do. That's great. Yeah. Uh, how often do the berries grow on there? They're always there. Always. <laughs> They're always there. And I'm trying, I, I'm, I wanted to make a forest of it because coffee grows best in a forest. It doesn't like to have like, you know, like rows like and rows of trees. It wants shade, so this is perfect. So I grew other things around it, not so much for my own use, but mostly for the coffee. So I'm growing a little sugar cane, some pineapples, some yucca, you know, other things just to be friendly to the coffee. Got you. <laughs> so that's my prickly pear. There's a prickly pear. Did mm -hmm. you put that in or was it here? That was there. That was there. Right. It just loves that spot. I have two white maysberry trees, but um, I've never gotten fruit from them. And it's probably because I- What kind of trees? Maysberry. When you say white, what do you mean white? Because they're white, as, in, as opposed to brown. I don't understand. Well, the maysberry is usually a brown. You're talking fruit. about the sapodilla, the brown right. sapodilla. But this one is white. They call it the white maysberry. I never it's, heard it. So it's yeah. white on the outside or the inside? Inside, outside. Really? Yeah. Wow. But I've never gotten fruit from it, and I think I've had that there almost 20 years. Which one is it? That one? The two of them. I grew oh, two, so you know they would cross pollinate. Okay. But that didn't help anything. They, it's probably because I grew it from a seed, and maybe I got a dud. But they're pretty trees. Yeah. I need to threaten them. Everybody says, take a belt and give them a good beating. <laughs> <laughs> Stress the tree out, in other words. Here's my little. I can take this off now. Red fruit. My little red fruit, which I covered up for the past couple nights because it was. Uh, I didn't want it to. Die. How long has that been in the ground? That's been there probably two years. It was taller, and then part of it died, and I, I, I didn't touch it. I wouldn't cut it down. I said, you know what? Let's keep. And the next thing you know, I got some some sprouts, so I'm happy with that. Uh -huh. So we have this nice long lake here. Oh, here we have... Um, sour sap. Sour sap. Oh, you good. Yay. Yeah, that's sour sap, but because of the cold weather, the leaves fell off, but they'll come back. They that's will. nice. Have you gotten any fruit off of that? Never. It's a young tree. Okay. Maybe two years. And here I have a jabatacaba. It's okay. a very slow growing tree. That needs water. I water it. Believe it or not, there's a couple of trees I do water here. Okay. Yeah, that jabba needs a lot of water. Does it? Yeah. Well, it's been here for like three years and I need to grow. Uh, yeah, it's a slow growing tree. So maybe I need more water for that one then. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. Yeah. So there's my rooster. Lychee, you see how thick the trunk is? So there's a bunch of coconuts here. Mm -hmm. And there's your uh, Brewster lychee. Wow, yeah. wow. And that one was like three times the size, but I cut it back because it had those mites. And what's growing back doesn't have mites, so. 
um, let's hope the wasps are doing their job. Yeah. Because what? if it does grow back, I may have to spray it. I don't like spraying anything. Sure. I don't spray anything. So What's far. this? This is a allspice tree. Oh, got ya. So you, if you want, you can. Yeah, I, it. I, they smell great. Yeah. Yep. Smells wonderful. Now we call it pimento in Jamaica. Okay. Is this your property here besides the lake or just your ends on the lake? No, I go uh, like about 20 feet into the lake. Okay. And the neighbor owns most of it. But you know what? She's not getting rid of her lake. Neither, yeah. neither are those other neighbors. So I get to enjoy the lake. <laughs> yeah. Wow, look at this, all these trees. So this is a Julie mango, which is a very slow, it's a dwarf mango tree. But it's one of the, I have actually gotten some, um, I've gotten Julie's off of it. I think I'll do good this year because I see quite a few blossoms coming up. Yeah, Julie's are another mango that don't do great here in South Florida. They don't. No. Well, they do better in, in Miami or Fort Lauderdale. But and what about this? What's this? It's a lychee. Another lychee. You like lychee, huh? <laughs> well, I have 50 lychees. How many? 50. Oh, wow. You really like them. <laughs> well, I was hoping to have a little business going, you know, lychee. Uh -huh. Because Jupiter Farms does really well with lychees, and they started when I moved here 20 years ago. They were $2 a pound. They're up to $10 a pound yeah. now. And if people can pick it from your house, rather than going to a store where they're tasting terrible, at least they can sample it here before they buy it. And they go, oh, this is, it was just a thought. So I have quite a few. I just planted these last year. And you don't, I mean. But these were all from. They were air layered trees. Okay, now, as you see the size of these mature lychees, how big they are, you planted them kind of close, do you think? I mean, look how big they get. What I'm going to do, though, is keep them trimmed. Okay. And if you keep it trimmed, you get a better harvest, I think. Okay. So the year that they're not going to bloom, that they're not going to get fruit from them, you trim them. Now, right what tree is this? Is it mango? That's just what happened was I had. Yeah. There's a lot of bloom so on there. It was a there. grafted mango and it it almost died. But then it came back to life and now it's just a common mango. Wow. It was supposed to be a Julie, but it's definitely not a Julie. Wow. Yeah. So you got a bunch of leeche here and what's this in front of us here, this tree? That's another mango. Another mango. Do you know what kind? It's supposed to have been a Julie, but it's doing the same thing that one's doing. Okay. Anyway, here I have cinnamon. Okay. If you want to take a leaf, you're welcome to. Okay, between the old spice and the cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Remember to, you know, to pick, yes, you pick it down here, you never pull it. Um, Delicious. Great here's smell. Here's a bay leaf tree. Bay leaf, another, wow, all these aromas. This one is amazing. You can make bay leaf tea. It's good for so many different uh, ailments. It's like every house should have a bay leaf tree. Here I have a small avocado. I've never, I grew this from seed. I've never gotten any fruit from it, but hopefully this year, this is about three years old. Over there, if you want to go close to it, it's a tamarind. Okay. And that's, that's actually a sweet tamarind. It's delicious. But I don't know if it's any's right now. Sweet tamarind, that's a nice tree. And you put that one in? Yeah, I got that from a nursery. I didn't. Okay. And be careful. I do have, I call them landmines. It's uh, the, okay, the, the, the ants. <laughs> no, the ants. Oh, the ants, the ants. Yeah, be careful. I don't want you so to with these big. big trees, are they just oak trees that were here before you moved in? Well, this is what they call poor man's orchid. This one, that one, and that one over there. Yeah, they're here, but the, the, the hurricanes, as you can see, have rabbits. So these are all leeches. Yep, all leeches. That this are planted close that you're going to keep trimmed. Yes. Okay. And when it rains here, did you get floods here? Nope. No flooding. And you said you had. Because I'm at the high end of this neighborhood, so the water actually runs down to my poor neighbors at the end. And you the said you have uh, some uh, uh, raccoons? 
Oh, yes, we have a lot of wild animals. This is called Wildwood Acres. <laughs> and we do have raccoons and deer and possums and all kinds of wonderful. Well, I love wild animals. I'm a wild animal person. <laughs> and this, my friend, is not a fruit tree, but it's a K-pop tree. Very rare. K-pop. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, take note of. This tree will grow this much in diameter. Wow. And you, you can't even see the sky when this is finished growing. But that'll probably be in 100 years. So oh, that's, for, that's for my, um, my future kids. <laughs> <laughs> but look at this. Look at, the, uh, look, how, look at the thorns that grow. Oh, wow. There. Yeah. It's an interesting tree. Yeah, look at the thorns in that tree. I think some of the, the leaves are edible, but I would look it up before you go eating them. Now, how often do you water these leaf trees? You don't have to because this area is moist. Always. Because this is the uh, this is the north end of the property and the water does tend to come this way. If it's going to pool anywhere, it would be here, but it does run. But you get more water here than anywhere else. So that's why I put the lychee farm over here. <laughs> Very nice. And you got another lake right here. Yeah, well, pond. Pond. <laughs> Did you put that pond in? No, I have two ponds on either side of the driveway. So it's like a little moat. And then we have the long lake in the back. That's a poinciana I grew from seed. And another poinciana over there from seed. I love poinciana's when they, they're my favorite flowering tree. Well, you certainly have uh, some nice trees here. I try. It's because I enjoy it. And what are these here? Um, they call them the tourist trees. I forget the name. Are they fruit or no? No, they don't fruit, but I, I got them. Because they're they're good for South from South Florida. They're 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 native. And they call them the tourist tree because they, their skin is red and it peels. Oh nice. <laughs> you like that. Oh, hey everybody, this is Jen from foodforestdyi.com. I'll put the link below the video. This is the reason why we're at this property today, because she knows a whole bunch of people with gardens and she told me about this place and I was able to come here today. So shout out to Jen. Every time we buy a pineapple at the store. I cut the head off, trim it a little, and stick it in the ground, and voila. I have pineapples growing everywhere on this property. Wow. And there's some aloe vera that my friend gave me, and I stuck it in the ground, and now it's getting all these babies. Yeah. You know, nature takes care of itself. So tell us about what you were saying about the wasp, but you don't want to get rid of the wasps. I, tell, I, I, I don't want to get rid of the wasps because people hate wasps, but wasps, I do firmly believe, and we can look this up, um, eat the mites and the bugs that are going to harm your trees. So yay to the wasps because the bees, I know we need bees and we love bees, but bees will bring the mites to your trees and the wasps will eat them. Okay. How about that? <laughs> what were you saying about the coconuts? Well, we have these two beautiful coconut trees here. I have about a dozen coconut trees on the property. When the coconuts drop, just push them to the side and leave them and you will get coconuts trees i'm sure you're aware of that but you know for your audience i'm trying to tell them like here's one this one just fell and look i got me a little coconut tree how long does it take before it gets like i that? don't know but i don't worry about it i just push them to the side and eventually are we talking months weeks years could be months okay you get yourself some coconut trees and then you just keep planting them around the property that's how you expand all right margo thank you for having us come out to your house and showing us your trees my pleasure I look forward to coming in the summer and tasting some of your Yes, because right fruit. now, nothing's really bearing. Yes. Except the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all those berries were nice. But thank you very much. You're welcome.